Thank you all for coming. For our next presentation, we have Troy and Carl talking about the state of EPIL. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, I'm Troy Dawson. This is Carl. Carl. <laughs> thought he'd, he'd chime in. Um, we are both on the EPIL steering committee. Uh, we're, we are also both Red Hat employees, but we are here talking as members of the Apple Steering Committee. Uh, most everything we have to say here has is not Red Hat influenced. Uh, if there is influences, we will tell you. Okay, I'm gonna start off. So there's lies, bad lies, and then statistics. So we're gonna start off with statistics or metrics. Uh, a lot of these metrics that we, we have come from, not a lot, all of them, but you'll see the Velociraptorizer and Brontosaurusizer. Uh, those come from, from Matt, from Fedora. The Velociraptorizers are the unique IP addresses seen daily for each release. So, so this is the old way of gathering statistics on the Fedora and Apple mirrors. There's some problems with it in that if you have have a NAT, a network address translating, and you have 10 machines behind that and they all come through, uh, this will, they only count as one. So these aren't entirely accurate, but they do show trends. So let's look at the first couple. So it looks like we've, we're actually getting up into the 5 million Apple, Apple users. That's pretty impressive. Uh, let's break them out into each release. I think this is fun. Uh, there's three things I thought was fun. First is when Rail 5 went end of end of uh, life, we had this nice drop, and then it's pretty low. When Rail 6 went end of life, we also had this drop, but we still have about a million um uh, Apple 6 users, which means there's still a million machines out there running Apple 6. Uh, what are we, 10 months after it went end of life? Not much. We care too much about Apple about that, but uh, just something to note. Uh, fun thing, Apple 7's on a nice track. Apple 8's on a nice track. And then we have this fun... What is that? We jumped from two and a half million to three and a half millions in one month. That wasn't there when I gave the state of Apple on, on Nest. I think it's going to average back out to be just a little bump, but it's, it's a fun thing to see. Now, the other things is called the Brontosaurus Sapphire. I didn't name it. Matt named it. Uh, these are based off of the... The new way that they do counting, uh, DNF has a, Carl, correct me if my, I'm wrong, is it count me? Is that what it's yes, called? Yes, DNF count me. DNF count it's me. something Fedora implemented. Yep, and it has to have DNF. It was implemented somewhere around uh, Rail CentOS 8.2. Uh, so all of these numbers on the Brontosaurus Sapphire are only... Apple 8, uh, when Apple 9 comes, we can use that. And anything that shows a time thing, uh, just remember it only started, we'll just say at the beginning of the year, but it was actually a few months before. So here's a nice thing for Apple 8. We see that we're almost to the 12 million mark, 12 million, 1.2 million. Uh, those of you who heard me at the Nest conference, I was off by one zero, so sorry about that. 1.2 million uh, Apple 8 users, and it's pretty good. This is kind of hard to see the full breakout, so we will switch it. So this is broken out. So we have almost 800,000 CentOS Linux users. That seems pretty good. Uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is purple, is coming along at a nice pace. Um, that's expected. The next one down here is CentOS Stream. 
we're going to break those bottom ones out a little bit more. One thing, as an Apple maintainer developer, this rise in CentOS, some people might think is good. But if you think about this in December, January of this year, uh, that means people are going to have a, a, a hard time. So, but we're here to talk about Apple. So if we break, if we get rid of the top two, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS, CentOS 8, plain CentOS 8, we see the different numbers. So stream is continuing to, to grow. That's that's a good thing. Um, actually, all of them are continuing to grow, except for maybe Springdale Linux. It's got its base followers. And Cloud Linux has the same. Uh, but here we have uh, Rocky Linux is coming up and almost overtaking Oracle. And actually, Carl told me before that this these numbers are a little old. If you see that there's a gap before October and Alma Linux has overtaken it. Uh, you mean sorry, Rocky's Rocky, overtaken Oracle? Exactly. Rocky's overtaken yeah. Oracle. Alma is still in the lead for third place, wait, fourth place. But anyway, <laughs> dealing with this conference, CentOS Stream is uh, on a healthy incline. Now, I'm showing you this slide to show you the next slides. This is another thing, a brontosaurus sizer. This is the percentage of for arches. So we have 98% are XA664, uh, 1.7 arch 64, and then S390X and PowerPC take up the, the rest, which is not much. So if we look at this one, the arch XA664, again, we see it's nice, healthy, CentOS Linux in the lead, which is slightly troubling, but still that's okay. Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then these numbers are very similar to uh, what we saw on the other graph. But then when we look at Arches, for whatever reason, uh, Rocky Linux is actually ahead on the Arch 64. Well, ahead of Alma and Oracle. Uh, CentOS Stream again is still still in the lead, but remember this is also less than two percent of all of the machines. And then PowerPC 64 is sort of what you would expect. Only uh, Red Hat Enterprise and CentOS users <sighs> hit the slide too much. And what what do you expect? But uh, if you are rich enough to have an S390X, I shouldn't say rich enough, have a big enough budget to have an S390X, you have a big enough budget to afford Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is good. Keeps me in a job. This is the last statistic, which I think is, is interesting. So these are age over time. And it's broken up by first week, 2.4, five through. So one week, one month, is that three months or eight months? So four goes into 64, that's six months. Four goes into 24. So, so one week, one month, six months, and then longer than six months. And you'll see on this one, the machines that have only, only lived for one week is pretty consistent between 40 and 50. These are the type of machines, like if you spin up a cloud instance and it's, it's only running for a day or two and goes down. Or if you're doing tests, you spin up something, run one test, maybe two tests, and then you you throw that machine away, virtually throw it away. I doubt you're going to be throwing away the containers hard too, thing. also, right? Yeah, containers. Yes, containers are also often that way. Now these others, so two to four weeks, is also fairly consistent. Now I I do not know, but I picture. Uh, people that spin up a machine, they have a policy that they run a machine for a month and instead of doing updates, they get a fresh, do a fresh, either a fresh install or a fresh virtual machine or a fresh container instead of doing an update, which is one way of doing updates. Uh, it makes sure that your machine is always clean. 
I, I never did it that way, but I'm sure other people did, and that's the way they like it. Um, but then the other 50% are long-term machines. Um, I don't know why six months is staying consistent, unless people like doing the fresh install every six months. And then you got your long enterprise, what I consider enterprise machines, uh, longer than six months. So anyway, this is one of my fun fun th stats that I like looking at to see how things are there. Okay, we're done with stats. What's really happening in Apple? Um, for starters, th this might seem minor to some, but it's I I like it. We've switched from the Fedora Wiki to Fedora Docs. Um, Wikis are great and have their place, but uh, it was getting pretty spread out all over the place with lots of pages just sort of hanging there. Um, the word of note, it's still not perfect. Uh, some of the transitions uh, didn't quite go right, and I just found a couple just today before this, uh, but we're fixing it. And Positive along, spin, lots of areas for contribution. That's true. Uh, if, if you want to do a quick contribute, look at there and go, oh, this is misspelled. This has, you can see where some of the links are. Yeah. There's goofy. some wiki formatting stuff that got carried over that doesn't render right. Yep. But for the most part, I, I really like the new docs better. It's easier to find things. I think a lot of people appreciate the pull request model rather than the wiki edit model. Yeah. Um, wiki edit has no... Anybody can just change it, which no is good and bad at the same time. Oh, yeah, no conversation. Yeah, like some of the changes we're, we're thinking of for one of the policies, we can have a pull request, have a conversation on that, and then either change the change it or merge it, depending on the conversation. So there's this other thing right next to Docs. What is that on the screen, Carl? That is our new Apple logo. We... we there was an old logo. Um, it's somewhere on the old wiki pages that it's just kind of always existed, but never really was used anywhere widely. Um, pretty, pretty unknown. We decided we wanted to have a logo refresh and actually start using it prominently in a few places, such as on the docs website. Uh, we went through a, through a process with the Fedora design team, and this is where we ended up uh, with what got the most votes. Uh, it's a pretty sharp design. I think it fits in, fits in pretty well with a lot of the other, uh, kind of fedora design aesthetic. And uh, that's what we're going to start using. The mental representation we were going for there was, or kind of retroactively put on as we designed it, was the kind of bottom magenta part is sort of kind of rel, but not may maybe not. Maybe it's one of the rel clones, or maybe it's sent to a stream. And then the top blue part would be fedora. And you can use the middle part of Apple to kind of bridge the gap between rel or rel rel like distributions and fedora to extend it further to get what you need done thank you so i i think it looks pretty good um as you'll see in other slides apple doesn't have to be underneath it that's just one format of it uh moving on um uh, i don't think we have to say too much about this but the the Apple Packager SIG was created to deal with a large amount of packages uh, not in Apple 8 and could potentially not be in Apple 9. Um, some of them, the, the Packager SIG allows a group of people to maintain it instead of just one person volunteering and saying, hey, you know, this guy doesn't want to bring it into Apple, but I will maintain it. Well, we can do a group of people maintaining that instead of just one because you know if let's say carl wants to maintain foo and he's on vacation for two weeks um and he's not really the main maintainer anyway it allows a group of us to maintain those packages and, and bring more of them in the idea was to kind of mimic what uh, fedora has uh, language specific SIGs like the Python SIG and uh, and the Node.js SIG, things like that. We wanted to try and mimic something like that, but not specific to any kind of group of packages. Um, but we do have similar problems to those language stacks where 
one particular package may be affecting a lot of packages that want to get built for Apple. Uh, so that's kind of where the Apple packaging SIG can step in and help and maintain those, especially when the Fedora maintainer isn't interested in an Apple branch, which happens from time to time. Yep. All right. Apple next. I'm going to turn this completely over to you, Carl, if you're on my left side. <laughs> sure. So Apple next is this new thing that we're working on. And um, to describe this, what I'd really have to describe is first is the relationship between rel and CentOS stream. Um, CentOS stream is kind of a preview of the next rel minor release. It is very similar and most things just work just like they would work between rel minor releases. However, occasionally, uh, and this happened in the past with just regular Apple, there might be a, a package that changes, usually a library in a rel minor release that causes the Apple package to get rebuilt. It's not every minor release, it's not every package, it's just something that happens from time to time. Um, yeah, one example I can remember from the, a late example from the rel seven days was the image magic library got bumped to a new new library version in like 7.8, I think, or 7.9. And it caused the PHP image magic package in Apple to need to get rebuilt so it would work properly. Uh, those, those are the type of things that I'm talking about. Well, we'll face those earlier, uh, up to six months earlier in CentOS Stream now. And because of that, I think the last time I ran the metrics on it, like 1%, uh, granted that was before the QT stack got rebased. That caused a little bit more disruption, which Troy is very familiar with. Um, but the idea is that the, for those small amount of packages that need to get rebuilt to be compatible with the next minor release into a stream, Apple Next is a place for that. Regular Apple builds against RHEL and it's compatible directly with the latest version of RHEL. But if a package doesn't uh, doesn't install on CentOS Stream the next minor version because of a library change, the packager can rebuild it in Apple Next, get it linked against the proper libraries, and have a compatible package delivered. It's a different build target in Koji, and it's a it's an additional repository, but it is not a complete duplication of Apple. It is not meant to be a separate Apple for CentOS Stream. Um, also, RHEL betas, it's useful for that as well. Uh, the RHEL 8.5 beta just got released, and there are things in and Apple Next that will work with that that don't work on RHEL 8.4, that's the current GA, and you can peek into Apple Next to get a compatible package build if you're using that beta. Um, so it is a just a small additional repository that you use in conjunction with Apple, so that way you can have all working packages. It'll be a slightly higher NVR. We have the dist overridden, so that way if, you're, um, if your release is dash 1.el8 in Apple, it'll be dash one dot el8 dot next in apple next which so sorts slightly higher but then the next time you do a dash two release in regular apple it'll be higher than both which ideally happens whenever the the library in question gets to the next real minor release and gets published so that's kind of the inner workings of what apple next is and how it works um, it's been a pretty good success so far with with apple eight uh, we're seeing good uptake of it uh, a lot of people are using it and don't realize it. We added a weak dependency, uh, a, a weak conditional dependency. If you are on CentOS Stream and you have the CentOS Stream release package installed, Apple release will recommend Apple next release. If you're on RHEL, it do that recommends doesn't take effect. So it handles it intelligently. So a lot of people, as they updated their Apple release package, got that package as a recommended install and are pulling packages from there if it's needed if there's a higher version there. I think that's the yeah. basic summary of where we're at with it currently. We can go on to the next slide, Troy. Yep. Unless you had anything you want to add about it. Oop, I... Um, I, I was just going to say, I I think the adding it, so the, the conditional weak dependency worked out really good. A lot of people, like you said, don't even realize they're doing that so that the package maintainers Hey, Their package they, installs just work, and they don't realize how or why. They yep. they don't need to. <laughs> they don't need to. It's 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 good for them. The main thing was enabling package maintain. Before this, package maintainers just didn't have an option to get a working package on CentOS Stream if there was a library difference for one of their dependencies. Now they have an option, and if they don't if they don't care if they don't want to use it, they can completely ignore it. That's true. So Apple nine. What can you tell us about Apple 9? 
So as the name kind of implies, uh, we are working on the next major version of RHEL and the entire ecosystem, and Apple is part of that. Um, RHEL 9 is, are, has been in development for a little while now. You can see the public face of that with CentOS Stream 9. Uh, it's already usable now. Where, uh, as far as release, we keep getting that question. It's kind of a fuzzy thing. Uh, we were waiting on packet, sign packages and the mirror network, and then there's a few other little missing pieces that we're putting together. Um, but you can go ahead and download it now and start using it. There's already a repos package, and that's sort of, I don't know, soft launched, I guess. Uh, we'll have probably something more like, more resembling an announcement soon. But um, based on timing, this is not any kind of secret information. Rails already stated that we're on a three-year major version cadence and a six-month six month minor version cadence, which some people might have just noticed accidentally by the timing. Based on that, it's pretty easy to guess when next year Rail 9 is going to come out based on three years from when Rail 8 came out uh, in 2019. Um, that's not an exact thing, of course. You know, there's a little bit of leeway, but it's a good guideline. So we're not that far away from Rel 9. Uh, so we're going to need Apple 9 for it. People, a lot of people completely ignore Rel releases and, you know, the rest of the ecosystem until Apple exists and is well populated with the packages they care about and depend on. Um, we've noticed that a lot with the slow uptake for Rel 8 and, you know, the related distributions just because of, uh, there were a few contributing factors there. Um, the Rail changed a lot of the way the composers are delivered, or rather the packages are delivered, and a lot of devil packages weren't shipped in the distribution that are needed by Apple packages. We've been working through that to improve that and make that better, but it's not great yet. Uh, we also had a lot of curveballs with modularity, uh, specifically default modules in the build route that uh, required some additional software to be written to get uh, Apple working correctly. So... We, ha we had our work cut out for us with Apple 8. Um, thankfully, Apple 9 is going to be in a lot better shape, and we're already getting work started on it. Um, we're going to do it in a little... Because we have Apple Next now, we're actually going to kick that off sooner. Um, we're, we've are we already got an Apple 9 Next build target in Koji, and we're working on the rest of the connecting pieces to be able to actually put it in Bodhi and um, have packagers submit builds and uh, release those. That, of course, will work directly with CentOS Stream 9 today. Um, the main difference from the way that 8 works is that uh, Apple 9 won't exist yet, so all packages that you that you want to release for Apple at this phase will be in Apple 9 next only. And then we have a plan, um, credit to Mohan, one of my teammates in the CPE team, from he mainly works on Fedora Release Engineering. Um, working with him, he, it was mainly his thing he's championing, but we're our plan right now is that we're going to populate, open up Apple 9 next and get, you know, encourage contributions there and get more packages there and get it started. People can start using it now with CentOS Stream 9. And then once RHEL 9 is actually released and mirrored into the Fedora infrastructure, um, we'll start setting up Apple 9 that builds against strictly RHEL 9, not against CentOS Stream 9. And we'd like to do a mass branching and mass rebuild from Apple 9 next into Apple 9 so that way within, you know, days or maybe a week or two, have a pretty well populated Apple 9, right, very close to the Rail 9 release. That is something that the, uh, that is something that Red Hat is very interested in. And that is why uh, there was a recent announcement. Uh, it was, I saw Troy put it on one of the mailing lists and uh, Rich also put it on the CentOS blog that uh, Red Hat is going to be staffing uh, Apple work, uh, I forget the exact phrasing, but what it boils down to is the members of CPE that were working on Apple in their spare time are now able to actually work on Apple as part officially as part of their job, which is great news. Um, I saw some weird takes that it was some kind of a takeover thing, which doesn't make any sense because it's literally the same people doing the work, just whether or not they get to do it in their spare time or officially is the, is the main difference. Um, I'm actually going to be on that team. Uh, I haven't really said that publicly anywhere, I don't think. But yeah, you have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'll be starting that sub team. I mean, I'm still CP I'm still on the CPE team, just like Troy and a lot of our other colleagues. Um, but really, it's just these various initiatives within the CPE team and assignment. Um, hopefully, we can grow that out and have more more people assigned to directly working on that, or um, at least primarily working on that as their first first area of concern. Um, oh, look, we're on the next slide accidentally. <laughs> well, we, yeah, I was going to say, we, we're already talking about it. 
Um, yes. I just want, I, I do want to give, uh, wait, are, are we done with mine? Oh, it's fine. I was saying we're accidentally on the next slide because I realized I was already bleeding over into that uh, yeah. with my oh, nine talk. What, as, as far as Apple nine, that is the, uh, the main plan. Um, so hopefully we can have Apple nine very well populated for rel nine and rel nine clones to use very early on. Um, and of course we're hoping to have that, ho hoping to have Apple nine next deployed for CentOS stream nine users. Um, in the next couple of weeks, probably, I would say, would be my guess at this point. Yep, that's my hope. I think that's it for now. We can go on, even though I've okay. already kind of touched on the Red Hat you're, you're uh, help. Um, Carl's already in introduced this, but I wanted to do two things. Uh, there's there's an actual quote from 2021 Red Hat Summit. And sorry if you're not looking at the camera, but this is where the words are. Uh, at 2121 Red Hat Summit, Gunnar Helixson said, my hope, who works for Red Hat, my hope is to make Apple a first-class participant in the overall enterprise ecosystem. This was followed by Mike McGrath saying, Apple is important. Um, and to Red Hat, Apple is important. But bear in mind that Carl already said it, uh, Red Hat does not want to take over Apple. They want Apple to remain an independent community, uh, much like Fedora, maybe even more so than Fedora. I was going to say, just like how Fedora is, Red Hat, you know, provides wants to ensure resources for Fedora, uh, but historically has not done the same thing for Apple, which is a sub project of Fedora. Uh, yeah. Now it's just getting more official that they're providing resource official resources for it. Yeah, if if anybody follows some of our meetings, there's been a lot of, like especially around like the real Apple eight time. There was also some big something else happening in Fedora and all sorts of things. And there's a lot of, hey, you know, this really would only take me a half day, but it's going to take me three weeks because I don't have a half day to do it. Um, so uh, we're, we're hoping and congratulations, Carl, for being the first one on on the team. And uh, hopefully but, we can grow the team. Yep. Yeah, but this will not. Uh, change policies this will not change the committee how people get on the committee um i i'm currently not not that with with carl but i might if i do it it should not change my uh, as chair not that i do that much as chair i get to <laughs> give talks that's what i get to you do you do a lot troy <laughs> But yes, it is. The irony is not lost on me that the uh, the Apple chairman wasn't the first person officially assigned to this. <laughs> so Troy, but, while being employed by Red Hat and on the CPE team, is not officially in his official time allowed to work on Apple. So it's a little funny. It, it is, um, but but to be honest, I would be doing the same with same work whether I'm chair or not. I just wouldn't be leaving the meetings. Um, and everyone, you know that the Apple steering committee we. That is open for anyone to uh, start participating in. Um, we don't really have strict guidelines around membership per se. Really, it's um, after someone shows up to the meetings after you know after you know weeks or months, we just kind of say like, "Do you want to you want to say that you're part of the committee now?" <laughs> it's kind of a soft me soft membership entrance thing. And uh, when the last chairman stepped down, uh, Smooge, lots of great years of uh, dedication and effort. Thanks to him, yep. Uh, yep. when he had to step away. Uh, we just, from the existing members, said who wants to be the next chairman, and Troy stepped up to do it, which is great. So uh, that is absolutely not anything that requires Red Hat employment to be be the chairman or well, to be a Sm member. Smooze actually nominated me. Oh, okay. Uh, that that being said, since you brought Smooze up, you I accepted just the say, nomination. I accepted the nomination. <laughs> it was one of those every step backs one thing. Um, <laughs> this this. Uh, Red Hat, uh, what am I saying? Try making Apple a first class participant um, is not a lot. Of, I might have kept the ball rolling, but a lot of this work has been uh, Stephen Smooge in working for all those years and others. Um, Wearing a I, I might have been <laughs> chair when this happened, but it is not. It's a little bit of my work, and it's a lot of the people coming before me. Um, are we done with this? Are we ready to go to the next one? Which I think that's I'm, everything I've got. 
Okay. I'm sure we'll have some Q and A stuff later. I see it populated, but we can save those till the end. Yeah, Maybe we just have plenty of room. Okay, KDE and Apple. Uh, those who know me that know that this is probably the main reason why I do so much Apple stuff is I love KDE. Um, KDE and Apple is changing a little bit with uh, Apple Eight. The KDE Sig has agreed. I don't know if it's agreed or proposed. Anyway, the KDE Sig is not helping with the uh, KDE in, in Apple Eight. Those of you who remember Apple 7 and KDE in Rail 7, it sort of sat there and stagnated. And, you know, because Rail wasn't updating anything with, with Rail 8, uh, although it was sad at the beginning, but it was also sort of good that they, they pulled KDE out. So now it can be in the Apple thing. Um, as, as the KDE SIG got together, we says, you know, how can we keep this being a good experience for people? Because we could just let KDE stagnate, or we could also make KDE always be the latest. Um, but for people wanting an enterprise Linux, they want things to be fairly stable. Um, so KDE adopted that it will update just on, this is Apple, Apple 8 and soon to be Apple 9. Uh, it will update just once a year. It'll be based off the latest stable Fedora release. Uh, at this time, it's currently Fedora 34. Um, the reason for, you know, once a year, we figure you, know, you get a nice stable year. But if we don't keep updating it, then it's really hard to update. If there's a security issue, if there's a major bug fix, uh, doing the jumps is harder. So we figured once a year we'll be fine. Um, don't worry too much about the numbers, but right now uh, 8.4, the QT is at 5.12, which is an older KDE, older QT, which brings in an older KDE. Since a stream, this is one of the libraries that uh, Carl yeah, talked about. Perfect example. They went up to 5.15. Uh, there's about 350 KDE packages that needed to be updated, but it allowed us to update to KDE 5.22. Now we're Can I also really quick, Troy, with one one uh, yep. thing that's really useful to point out there that I didn't bring up in the Apple Next slide, but this is a great example of it. Um, all the other policies for Apple, as far as version updates, still apply in Apple Next. Um, it is not the same thing as Playground, a whole different thing that we don't need to get into. I don't think, even think we have a slide for, kind of an experimental area. All the rules around updates and compatibility still apply. It should be. And based on going from, I'm assuming going from 5.18 to 5.22 was a highly compatible KDE upgrade. No config files had to be changed. No manual intervention. You could pretty much just update and enjoy the new bug fixes and features. Um, that, yeah, that... That is a good point. That's and why it was eligible for Apple Next Date. It is not just a free-for-all to put whatever major version bump you want into. If you wouldn't do the version change at a real minor release in Apple, then you shouldn't do it in Apple Next. Yep. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, it just KDE, seemed like a good opportunity to squeeze that in. <laughs> yeah. So if you do need to do major changes like this, he he's completely correct. We are making sure that there is an upgrade path and it upgrades just fine, which is why we're doing the one-year cadence, because if we don't do that, then yeah, it might not. But we're also giving an announcement. I've, I've announced several times on the Apple mailing list. Uh, the committee knows about it. Uh, there is steps, and you can see them on the new Fedora Docs site. There is steps what to do if you're doing a major, major bump. You know, here's 18 to 22. It's not that major. If we went to 6.1, which don't worry, we're not going to do that, um, then we'd have, well, I don't know what would happen then. <laughs> okay. Um, the next thing's going on, I wanted to, to also note that uh, stream 8 and stream 9 will be in step. So there won't be, oh, well, 8 changes this six months and then rail nine changes next six months. No, both rail eight and rail nine while while stream eight is, is around will get the same bumps. Um, and there's a question mark here because it says 5.22 question mark uh, because the 
the Dora team is trying to get 5.23 out um, and, and test it that, that's, and stable. Let's, let's clarify that. They're not just going to push something out. They want to get it out, tested, and stable um, in time for us to get it out for the 8.5 release. And FYI, that, note that this is the where we are going slide, that uh, that rail logo with the 8 on it. That is what you can expect in rail 8.5, which you can already – which you've already people have already seen in CentOS Stream 8, and you can also see in the RHEL 8.5 beta right now, but that is okay. coming soon. Cool. So hopefully we can hopefully the KDE team can get the 5.23 in before. I think they can. They're actually building that as we speak, or importing it and building it as we speak right now. Okay, now I'll take off my little KDE hat and move to the next one. Oh, we're on questions and answers. So do you, would um, you like me to read them off and you answer or vice versa? Sure. I, I With my current setup, I really don't like this. I, I have no screen to actually see. Ah, okay. That's fine. <laughs> I can read them off. Um, okay. Uh, first question. How do I get stuck epilate bugs unstuck? Um, I can weigh in on that first. Um, that is a whole lot of it depends based on what stuck means. Um, and that is... I don't think there's any way we can succinctly answer that and probably should in a Q&A like this, it's going to be very in-depth. Um, one stuck thing that we've seen before is where uh, someone requests an, an epilate branch of a Fedora package and the maintain maintainer doesn't answer. We have actually set up a new process to allow um, packages that are stuck in that sense to, uh, oh, you've got handy links here. Do you have um, that one? No, this is missing develop packages. Okay. Um, well, not the devil packages. Uh, I was talking about the stalled request. Yeah. So basically, yeah, if, was, after a certain amount of time, think. if the Fedora maintainer hasn't answered and doesn't want to do, uh, doesn't want to maintain an Apple branch, you can file a ticket with Fedora Release Engineering, following the specific steps uh, in timeline, and get yourself added to that package as a if you're a Fedora packager already in the in the packagers group, and then you can maintain the Apple Eight branch of it. Um, that may upset some people, but those people need to understand that nobody owns a package in Fedora or Apple, despite how we refer to it sometimes. They're all of our packages, and we maintain them together collaboratively. Anyone that's upset about getting another maintainer uh, added to maintain their package, especially for a branch they're not interested in, like Apple, needs to reevaluate how they view the ecosystem and the distribution. Um, there's other things that could be cause it to be stuck, like devil packages. Oh yeah, Troy's got the uh, stalled request thing up on the screen. We have the, the policy in our new doc, new fancy documentation, and I can um, link that in the chat as well once I find the exact link. Um, go to it's under Apple policy. I couldn't remember which one it was. And now that I've brought down the thing, I can actually look at what some of the chat stuff is. Yeah, if it's if it's an actual technical bug, um, there's not much we can do if the maintainer isn't doing anything. Maybe send something to Apple Devel. But yeah, uh, sometimes, Zill is, sometimes they'll get stuck from missing Devel packages, which may require action from from Rel and to actually put that into the CRB repository. Um, then there are yeah. other times where there may be a library rebase that. Maybe something you see in CentOS Stream that's blocking a package being added to Apple, and thus you'd be able to do it in Apple next, but not Apple yet. But then that would get resolved six months later. So there's a whole lot of categories of what stuck could be in this sense. I'm hoping that this question was asked in the context of that we could answer with the stalled request thing, because that might, might be the most common. Yep. So I see the next one. How can one join the Apple packaging SIG? Wait. Sorry, I didn't click on that. And it's gonna You've got a slide for that. I've got a slide for that. How can I contribute? Um, there's the Apple Packager SIG. So just to be clear, there's Apple itself. I didn't know this until I we were transitioning the documentation. Apple itself is a SIG. So there is the Apple SIG, not to be confused with the Apple Packagers SIG. Um, so not confusing at all. Not confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Are yeah, you going into fact, the next question? 
Or yeah, the, the how can someone join the Apple? Oh, how can you? There's another SIG related question next. What goes in a SIG and what goes in Apple? So I think this might be in the context of CentOS SIGs, um, considering oh. we're at a CentOS conference. Um, so I can kind of explain that a little bit. Um, there are Fedora SIGs that overlap with Apple. There's also the Apple Packager SIG that helps with, you know, across Apple. And then there are also CentOS SIGs that are uh, somewhat different in scope. Whenever people talk about adding a package and whether it should go in a SIG or go in Apple, usually that means they're comparing they're comparing a SIG repository with the Apple repository, which to me make, makes me think that they're talking about a CentOS SIG. Uh, Fedora SIGs don't have their own repositories. They put packages in the main distribution. So, um, and if I'm wrong there, Anonymous, uh, if you want to post another question and clarify what you meant by that, but that's what I'm going to go with. The idea there is that Apple has policies that you can't override packages from the base distribution with either a newer version or an obsoletes. And so if a package doesn't exist anywhere, it is a great candidate for Apple. If the package already exists in the distribution and you want to provide an alternate version or a newer version, uh, think like a newer kernel, CentOS 6 is the right place for that. That's because CentOS 6 each have their own individual repositories and they don't have the restrictions of not obsoleting packages. So if you opt into a SIG repository, you're opting into any packages they want to override from the base distribution. It's kind of the set expectation there. Whereas Apple is one, one big repository. And so nothing's allowed to override base packages because you may be enabling that repo to get one, get an extra package. You would also get the thing that you don't care about obsoleting uh, a stock package. And that's not what you want. That's one of the reasons Apple has gotten so popular is that it has strict rules around being extra only. Thank you. Yeah, if that, if good that wasn't what you me? meant, yeah, I think that was a very good explanation. If that wasn't what you meant, then uh, uh, please re repost or I'm going to look in the chat real quick. And I agree with Davida in the chat that uh, if the package is el eligible for ep Apple, it should go in Apple, um, be, mainly because once it's in Apple, any Fedora packager can help with maintaining it. That is a lot more, um, it, it brings a lot more people into the fold between uh, co-maintainers, the Apple packager SIG, and proven packagers in, in the Fedora packaging group to be able to help with that and unblock it if something catches on fire, which is something that should always be welcomed. So looking in the chat, Neil says Apple should be a working group. That's a good point because once I found out we were a SIG, it confused me. You should just decree uh, that it's now a working group. That sounds good to me. I'll give you a plus. All in favor. Sorry, we're not. Um, I'll put that on the agenda because. I don't know what functionally would change other than just phrasing it differently, but I'm in, I'm in favor of phrasing it differently. Yeah, because that would stop the confusion. Yes, it would clear things up. Um, do we have any other questions? If there are no more questions, thank you very much, Troy and Carl, for this wonderful presentation. And uh, welcome. I hope you get lots of new contributors out of it. We hope so too. Yes, we are v definitely looking for more contributors to Apple. Um, that is something I can hit on real quick. Uh, Apple is one of the most popular artifacts downloaded from the Fedora project, but uh, has a lot fewer, it, one, it has fewer packages, but it also has fewer contributors to it. So we're always looking for more people to get involved and step up there. Um, it's really, it starts with becoming a Fedora packager in general, and then, then you just participate in Apple as it's part of the Fedora project. So contribution pitch. Now I think we're done. Yep. Well, thank you again.